Thank you very much. Um, before I start, I want to say what a great job from the student speakers. Can you give them a round of applause? Good evening, class of 2019, Principal Shea, Superintendent Dr. Godomsky, Mr. Mayor, school board members, faculty, distinguished guests, families, friends, alumni, dogs, cats, guinea pigs, everybody. Welcome. Uh, it is an honor to be here, and uh, the fact that I'm standing up here means one thing and one thing only. Everybody else has been busy. I, I, I don't know what I want to do up here. <laughs> I have to say, but I want to say a couple of things first before we uh, before we start. I know that it's all the rage and it's been in the news lately. The class of 19, I just want to let you know, no, I'm not paying anybody's college tuition today. I am not, I'm not giving anybody a car, okay? Oprah oh, just made it tough for all of us graduation speakers. Not cool, man. Not cool. But I will say, um, maybe I can write out some koozies or t-shirts or something like that for the station band maybe afterwards. That's about it. So, um, I have to be honest with you, when I was thinking about what I was going to say tonight, I was kind of stressing out about it, because what can I say to you that is going to affect any of you in any way? I was talking to a friend about it, and he said, do you want to know what my graduation, my high school graduation speaker said? And I said, yeah, thinking I'm going to get something that I could use, maybe steal. The guy next to me goes, I don't remember anything he said. <laughs> and that's my point. Uh, what can I possibly do here or say here tonight that is going to make any of this memorable? The truth is, I think many, if not most, of the shooting class of 2019 may not even know who I am. And that's perfectly fine. That's the way it should be. Because tonight is about me. Tonight's about you. I'm not going to go on about a job in radio. I'm not going to go on about celebrities and rock stars or cool things I've been able to do for my job over 35 years because none of that matters. What does matter, though, is that you and I, we're not that different. I'm a little older. <laughs> All right, considerably older. All right, that's fine. But um, I walk the same hallways of some of the high school you do. I sat in the same cafeteria. Studied in the same library, sat in the same bleachers, not only as a student, but as someone who had kids who played sports in the service world. I went to the Pines playground, I played both ball against the, the water tank. I went to Hilltop School and I went to the middle school. Heck, I might even have silently in my head cussed out a teacher or two from time to time. Sorry, teacher, sorry. Um, but we're cut from the same cloth. And from this day forward, anywhere you go in your life, whether it's here or anywhere across the world, 35 years from now, when you run into someone from Summersworth, New Hampshire, you're gonna have that in common. And that might not seem like a cool thing right now, but trust me, when it happens then, it will be. It'll bring you home. So I started to think about what could I possibly tell you from my life that'll help you in any way. And the thing that sticks out the most is one thing happened to me when I was 23 years old and it changed my life. I was one year out of the University of New Hampshire and I got my dream job at a radio station. Radio is something I've always wanted to do ever since I was eight. There was never anything else. And I couldn't imagine a better job for me playing music, listening to music, talking to music. I couldn't imagine any better job. So I get this gig, and I'm doing a nighttime show. And there I am, one year into it, and the radio station brings in this mega radio celebrity guy to come in and talk to each one of the radio jobs and kind of coach it, right? Like a coach to give you tips that'll make you better, to give you the keys to the proverbial garage so I can take my car out as my career and take it for a spin. That's what this guy does. <coughs> And I go and I meet with him and I'm sitting in this conference room and here he walks in and he is all Hollywood man, 1985, he's got the slick jacket on, he's got the perfectly groomed goatee with the salt and pepper beard, he's got the slick back hair with the ponytail and the dark sunglasses, he's got the tan going on, this guy was a rock star at radio. Picture your greatest hero coming in to talk to you and tell you how to be better at what you do, that's what this guy was here to do. So he comes in and sits down, and 
He plays a tape of the night, the show I did the night before. It was a cassette tape, sorry, which is a little thing you and the parents and I just listen to. So we listen to music on. So all right, that's cool. You know what I'm saying. So he listens to the show. He gets done. He doesn't say a word. And he stops the tape. So I'm leaning in. This guy's going to lay some knowledge on me. He's going to give me the clues to success. He's just going to open the doors for me. He looks at me straight in the eye. And he says, and I quote, You might want to find another line of work. <laughs> Glad I was talking to you. Because <laughs> it wasn't to me. The silence that follows those words seem to last forever. What did you just say? And then he starts to talk, and his lips start to move. I can't hear a word he said. This guy just crushed me. This guy just took my dream and swept my knees out from under me. This guy destroyed me in one sentence. Johnny Hollywood comes in and kicks me right in the teeth. I can't even tell you how much that wrecked me that day. After brooding about it for the rest of the day and into the night, I didn't sleep much. I woke up, the sun came up, and I had kind of a clarifying moment. I told myself, this, this guy doesn't know me. He doesn't know my heart. He doesn't know how hard I'm willing to work to achieve my dream. He doesn't get to write my story. I'm the only one who gets to do that. And if I may quote, a brave, brave young woman named Arya Stark, who, who saved the world at the Battle of Winterfell. The next day, I went back to work and looked the guy in the eye, slick hair, Hollywood version of the Night King, and I said, not today. <laughs> 35 years later, I'm still standing, and I'm still doing the job I love. And the point of this story is that nobody gets to define you. Nobody gets to write your story. You do. When somebody tells you that you're not capable, and you pull your bootstraps back up, you get back in the game, and you prove them wrong, you tell them, not today. And trust me on one thing, sooner or later, in one way or another, what happened to me getting my teeth kicked in that day in that conference room, it's gonna happen to each one of you. Happens to all of us, one time or another. Maybe it's a job, maybe it's a relationship, Maybe it's something else. But just like everybody else, don't let that be your story. Third quarter of the Super Bowl. Patriots are down 24-3. It's, it's a story that nobody's ever come back from. Did Tom Brady let that be his story? No. Tom Brady, we wrote the book. So as you sit here tonight, class of 2019, you have a blank page in front of you. Tomorrow is the day you start writing the story that you want your life to be. And really, there's only one other thing I wanted to say to you tonight. And it's something I'd like to ask, not just in the class of 2019, but of everybody. And I truly believe that if you do it, if we do it, we can change the world. And it's really simple. It's two words. If you remember anything, remember these two words. Be kind. Be kind. We live in a world. We live in a world that just seems to be getting meaner by the day, and it doesn't have to be if we all just be kind. Be kind to the person at the coffee shop. Be kind to the person waiting to pull out on the road when you drive by. Be kind to the person at the counter at the store, or be kind to the person who has an opinion that is different than yours. When you're online, instead of making a mean comment or a sarcastic comment, don't. Be kind, because every single time you do or say something mean to someone else, it says way more about you than it does them. And actually, I'm pretty impressed because I know that the class of 2019 has already started down that road, and maybe some of you here don't know. Every day, at Southern High School, when these students have given the morning announcements on the PA system, do you know how they end the, PA, the, the announcements? Does 
Does anybody in the audience know? They say, take care of each other. Take care of each other. That's what's impressive. And as young adults, let me tell you, there's a lot of adults that should learn that very thing. We'd all be better off if we all did. If that's a notion, I hope you don't give up when you leave high school. Carry that notion with you throughout your life. It's a beautiful thing. And now I can go on and on about, uh, about stuff, lots of stuff, but I know two things. One of them is, you guys want to get out of here. Okay, all right, yeah, get the rule. The second thing is the Bruins bucked off at 820, so, all right. Congratulations and have a great night.